plan for the video is to unbox the tool, give it a quick test on some of this wood. This is off a pallet and it's super strong. I don't know what they were carrying with this, like a house or something, but it's super strong. My old circular saw struggles like mad with this wood. Um, so I'm gonna give it a try on that and see how it goes as a quick test. We'll do basically one cut just to see how it works. And then uh, we'll probably get into why I went specifically with this tool instead of say a Ryobi, which is in about the same price range. Uh, just why we went with what we did and maybe talk a little bit about the battery ecosystems. And then I'm gonna do a very unscientific test, uh, basically cutting down the rest of this and see how far we get on the battery. Now, as it says on the box, they recommend a minimum of four amp hour battery on this thing. I've got a two. So we'll see, this maybe won't even work. It should, the amp hours should just be capacity as opposed to oomph out of the battery. It just should be capacity. So um, it should work. It just should probably won't work as long as they would expect. So we'll see what that looks like just as a quick test. Mastercraft cordless reciprocating saw, zero to 3000 RPM, one inch blade stroke, lots of lights here, tool free blade change, tool only, does not come with the battery. Uh, it is um, basically compatible with their power pod battery system or their old 20 volt max battery system. I think it's basically the same battery system, it's just being rebranded. So it does not come with the battery. Uh, we're gonna give this sucker a try. First of all, unbox, we'll give it a quick test. What do we got going on the back here? On the back here, it does indicate to use a four amp hour uh, as their minimum recommended. I don't have a four, I only have a two amp hour in this uh, ecosystem, battery ecosystem. But we're gonna give it a try and see how it goes. Well, it's, uh, it does include a blade, a hex key. We'll get it open and we'll uh, Give it a quick test. Okay, let's do the unboxing. Here. It's not taped shut, so hopefully it's actually never been out before. Manual. Okay, well, that presumably had the blade in it. I saw it, I heard something fall. Uh, advertising for everything that's in the PowerPod ecosystem. So, Essentially Canadian Tire home brand, a variety of their home brands and things that can be tied into it, uh, into the system. Not too much in here. Here's the tool. Fairly straightforward. Let's see if I can find... Here's the blade that fell down. Okay. Blade does not appear to be used, so that is good. Now, simple wood blade comes with it, obviously. Uh, and then yeah, it's just just a simple tool, handheld, thumb grip, lock and unlock. So it's um, basically the lock is lockable. Uh, so you lock it. So it's not one you got to hold each time. It's single lock and unlock. So we'll lock it for now. Simple tool there. Fairly straightforward. Now, it does indicate toolless design. It does have a hex key design. Should just be, yep. Yeah. Release that, put it in. So it should just be a matter of do that. Slide it in the hole and let go. I didn't get it in far enough. There we go, that's better. There we go, it's in there. Battery, here's my two amp hour. Like I said, it uh, says on the box, Four amp hour is recommended, but that should be uh, like length and capacity as opposed to uh, actual power. So it is locked. Unlock it. 3000 RPM, one inch stroke. Feels fairly smooth in the hand. It doesn't bounce a lot. So we'll do a test cut here right away. And we'll move the tool around so we can do the test cut. Okay, so this is a piece of wood that I had tried to do with my circular saw. I don't know if it's visible how semi burnt I got it on the wood. So it's this is just strong wood. Now my blade's probably pretty dull as well when it's an old machine, but all 
All right. That goes through a little bit easier than it does with the circular saw. Now, I was trying to hold the wood and use the saw, and it bounced a little bit. Not quite as uh, powerful through as I would have liked, but I think that's it should be pushing down like this. But I'm holding the wood down at the same time, so that's pretty good. I'm fairly happy with that. So why the Mastercraft instead of the Ryobi? Right now, price. If you're familiar at all with Canadian Tire here in Canada uh, and how you buy things. There's an unwritten rule. Don't buy the tool at full price. Wait for it to go on sale because they regularly have sales on their tools and things like that. So what it comes down to is this, this particular reciprocating saw is regular, shown regular as $100, $110 on their website. Canadian on sale for $70 and um, we had significant Canadian Tire money. So if you're not from Canada, uh, basically Canadian Tire money is a um, bit of a bit of cash back you get, in-store credit really, you get back uh, with each purchase at Canadian Tire. You get a little bit back and you can add it up over time. And basically we've turned around and we've used a bunch of it to buy this. So that was mostly the cost, uh, the reason why we went with this one. Now we were close on the Ryobi as well. So we also have batteries in the Ryobi uh, ecosystem. We have a drill and dr uh, impact driver. Uh, in the real B ecosystem so we have batteries in that and they do sell a basically a battery free reciprocating saw as well but it's it was sitting at a hundred dollars so thirty dollars difference right now there's a sale on as I'm recording this there was a sale on a B basically could get an extra battery and charger uh, as a free add-on which made it very close to being what we would do but what it comes down to is well, first of all, we were able to use that Canadian Tire money we just had sitting. Granted, we could have used it for something else, whatever, but we just, we're not out of pocket of any money right off the hop, so it's worth it. We don't have a lot of a job to do. I just need to break down this wood. So right now, we don't really have a lot of a job to do. And then also, uh, long-term, this will be used really cutting down pipe. My wife's pool cleaning business or pool maintenance business, she'll have to do some replumbing and stuff like that. So it's only going to be cutting like, one and a half, two inch, three inch uh, pipes, uh, plastic piping. So it's, we don't need a super robust uh, reciprocating saw and it's gonna get used three to four times a year. So we don't need anything really big. Um, and we were in the battery ecosystem because we have another tool that we don't use very often or won't need very often we got this year, which is this 10, 10 foot chainsaw and a stick, our pole saw, basically extendable out to about 10 feet uses the Mastercraft uh, power pod type batteries like the uh, like the tool we just got. But this is the only tool we have right now with the battery. And basically we're gonna use that once a year. <laughs> so we had a big job we needed it for, we used it. And now from now on, it's a maintenance item we only use once a year maybe. So we don't really need uh, uh, need it very much. So we got a, basically a battery just sitting there. So it's like, okay, well it's good to have another tool using that battery being in that ecosystem. It's kind of weird. So now we're in the two battery ecosystems, which is not awful. It's not the most efficient, most ideal, but it's kind of the weird thing about the way the tool stuff work is that I was hoping to just get into one battery system and stick with it and get a bunch of batteries. But between deals and things like that, it just made sense to get into the two different systems. So a little wonky, but there it is. So uh, at this point now, we're gonna get into uh, basically trying to cut down the wood. A piece of four by four or something as an experiment standard four by four pine pressure treated yeah so i yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> That's going through that way faster than I did with that stuff. So, yeah, this is very hard wood. But let's keep going. Avoiding nails as best I can. Like that one right there. stop. So we'll see on the recording there. I'll try and figure out how long that lasted, but that battery is now in need of a charge. Okay, it's been about 10-15 minutes. You can still feel the battery is quite warm to the touch, especially the underneath side here. If I hit the button, get four battery lights flash. That's, I think that's telling me it's still too hot. So uh, we'll wait a little bit longer and then uh, we'll try and recharge it. Well, about 40 minutes after uh, took it off the machine and it died, it is now properly charging. Looks like the overheat protection is released and it's letting me charge it now. So hopefully I didn't break nothing, but we'll uh, let it charge and we'll see how it goes in a little bit. Okay, battery's fully charged, didn't wreck anything. Fully charged. Uh, it took about an hour and 15 minutes once it cooled down to charge uh, back up to the full 2 milliamp hour. So we're going to take the guy and finish this up. I'm not going to time lapse this part. I'll just kind of pop back once I am done so we can kind of show what batteries left after doing one of these. Okay, got it down, nine pieces. That was about a five foot strip down into nine pieces, so eight cuts. Let's check three bars. It had shown two when I first checked when I stopped and it's kind of recovered just a little bit. So yeah, it, uh, it's functional. It works. This wood was a significant test. Yeah. So this wood was a significant test to it. Um, and yeah, a bigger, uh, capacity battery, definitely worthwhile for it, depending on your use case and things like that. Uh, but yeah, uh, tool did good battery. I overworked it but that was on me as I tried to drive this thing into the ground just to see what would happen. So it's good. It'll definitely work for the piping that we really need it for. So that's awesome. All right. Okay. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video.